Okay, when we have variables that have exponents and we're multiplying them, the exponent rules come into play here. Yeah. So I'm going to rewrite this one using our box method. And I'm going to put just two boxes because this is a monomial being multiplied by a binomial because there's two terms here. And we're just going to take this piece by piece. You guys know if I have three and two, I multiply them and I get six. If I have an x squared and another x being multiplied, what happens to the variable? It stays the same. The variable stays the same, but its exponent goes three. up three. by one. And then y. And then y. But y. No. This term is now being multiplied by this one, and this term is negative, so I'm going to start off with my negative sign. The 2 stays the same because there's an invisible 1 here. X squared stays the same, but what's going to happen to the Y? Y squared. Y squared. That means the answer to this is 6X to the third Y minus 2X squared Y squared. Yes. I like the boxes because it helps you take these things piece by piece. If we just distributed this with the old school claw, you might miss one of those exponents needing to change. Do you guys see what I'm talking about there? Yes. Okay. Let's do another one sort of like that. We're going to do 3AB times 5A squared plus B. And realize the box is really just taking this out of the parentheses. Oops, I'm putting it inside. I meant to put it on top. What's going to happen with the 3 and the 5? And then the A variable is going to have what exponent? 3. And then B is by itself. And then for this box, we're going to keep the 3 and the A, and what happens to the B? Square. Square. So that means that this equals 15 A to the third B plus 3 A B squared. Mm -hmm. Let's step this up though and let's start doing ones that are going to end up being quadratics. X plus 3 times X plus 2. Now, before we put this in a box, I want you guys to close your pens and look up front because I want to show you how I learned this and your parents probably too. They, they used to teach us what's called the FOIL method. And FOIL stands for first term, outer terms, inner term, and last term. Oh, that just hurt my brain. No, just double look. Inner term, last term. Don't memorize it because I'm going to teach you a way better way. Can you see where the mistakes can happen by drawing all of these arrows and trying to distribute this way? Yes. You could totally multiply the wrong ones or leave off like a negative. All those kinds of mistakes happen. But if we take the same idea and we put x plus 3 and x plus 2 and we multiply, this is going to be the first terms. X and 2. This is going to be x squared. Mm -hmm. This is going to be 2x. 3x and, six. and six. 6. When we do this, here's the problem. Whenever you do FOIL, you end up with like terms that have to be combined, but they may, may not be in order. If you do it in the box method, the like terms are always diagonally next to each other. Oh, wait. That doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah. And we're going to add them together, so this is 5x. So this squared. equals x squared plus 5x plus, plus, five five x plus 6. Okay? 
Now, where the foil method really messed me up, and I, I think about all the time, I told you guys when I first started teaching you in the fall, I did not like algebra in high school, and my teacher gave up on me. And I think often, like, where were my roadblocks? Where were the things that I just was like, I don't get what you're doing anymore? And it was when we went from FOIL with two terms times two terms to binomials and trinomials being multiplied. Ooh. Ooh. Very spicy. This was one of my roadblocks. Very it was something like this times this. And I was doing FOIL method with an additional arrow set because this has three instead of two. Can you see where the mistakes can happen and the confusion and just giving up? How about if we do this box method and we put the X2 up here. What's going to go down the side? X squared, negative 5X, positive 4. Can you already see how this is going to start happening? Yes. X to the third, negative 5x squared, 4x, 2x squared, negative 10x, 8. Yeah, this is not a 10x squared because there's no x up here. Notice again, like terms are diagonal. Negative 10x and 4x would give us 6x. 2x squared and negative 5x is going to give us negative 3x squared. And we have this term and this term. So what does this whole thing equal? x to the third minus 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. Isn't it negative 6x? Because negative 10x and 4x? Yes. What would I do without Maverick and Sandra <laughs> catching all my mistakes? Okay? So even with that, I made a small mistake. But do you guys see how this could end up being clear? Yes. Now before you're going to do this, we're going to do a whole bunch of practice of the two by two. Okay? Yay. So clear your board. I want you to do x plus 3 times x minus 4. Show me the box. This is more about process than right answer. I just want you guys practicing it this way on purpose. Show me it filled in. Pull them out. This should end up being a quadratic trinomial when you're done. Yeah. No. You didn't add the like here. Um, you can do that. Yeah. Jaden, yeah. I, I really did not know that. I thought we were just leaving like that. Nope, so I said Jaden, like it's square. diagonally, and you want to write look. what the result is. Can you look, see these two? They're always diagonal. Yeah. So you can just add these two. Okay, let me see your let me see your boards. Bada boom. <laughs> you have to pull it out of the box to get the answer. The box is to help you organize it. It's not the answer. Sianna? Then you need to come closer. I'd like to see it then. Okay, erase. We're going to do one more on the board, and then we're going to move to practice on paper. X minus three squared. Okay. How do you do this? That means X minus three times X minus 